Hello and welcome to the John Ark Show. Today's episode is called Scarface, the Monster Millionaire Moneymaker. On December 9th of 1983, a movie called Scarface made its debut. Uh, it was created as a remake of the original Scarface from 1932, and it was designed to be a contemporary version of it. It was designed to reflect the culture of the day. Before we begin, I want to uh, encourage you to subscribe, like, uh, follow, and comment on the show. And also, I would like to tell you that Holly, uh, that, uh, that this show is sponsored by a company called HollywoodIsCalling.com. Uh, it's, it's a company which allows you to purchase live phone calls from your favorite celebrities. Um, or you can ha uh, have them call somebody you know and, and, and talk to them for, uh, for a brief moment. Now let's begin. Scarface debuted, um, its biggest appeal uh, was the, uh, the gratuitous violence and also the great acting of Al Pacino. But something else started to happen after the, uh, the audience saw the movie. What happened was that American workers and business people started to model uh, the ruthlessness of the behavior they saw Tony Montana exhibit in the movie and uh, they began to uh, accept it as their own when it came to business. It became uh, apparent to people that the reason Tony was climbing the ladder of success so quickly was that he wasn't willing to just sit back and take it. Uh, if he wanted something, he would go out and, uh, and make it happen. Now on the surface, that may appear to be criminal, um, but what the culture began to notice is that during the 80s, when greed was good and, and heavily promoted in the media, is that greed was considered a shortcut, uh, a shortcut to the uh, achievement of uh, what you needed. Companies and entrepreneurs who broke all the rules and disrupted everything were receiving you know, all the rewards for doing just that. Mike Milken uh, was revolutionizing the, uh, the bond market with his junk bonds and making hundreds of millions of dollars in the process uh, by breaking the rules. Now he ended up going to jail, but when he got out, he, uh, uh, he made so much more money uh, that it allowed him to become a philanthropist and to help uh, you know, countless other people. Stock trader Ivan Bosky got wealthy by breaking the rules with insider trading and uh, he made enough money that uh, he was eventually able to pay a $100 million fine. Uh, you know, when people saw that number, their heads exploded. It was amazing. When Enron collapsed and went bankrupt, the public learned that, um, that the company and some of its leaders were involved in so much fraud and, uh, and accounting corruption that virtually the entire operation was nothing but smoke and mirrors. It was a house of cards uh, built on lies and illusion and uh, eventually it all collapsed. These are all examples of something called ruthless dislocation. Uh, what does the movie Scarface um, and the ruthless pursuit of success have in common? They all believe in something called ruthless dislocation. That means that you are so determined to force your will upon something or somebody uh, that uh, you can literally alter reality as it's perceived by the people you're telling these things through. Today there are now business classes being taught you know, at some Ivy League schools where very deceptive, with very deceptive and innocuous sounding names. The purpose of these classes is to teach the best and the brightest MBA students that it is often acceptable to bend, distort, and mislabel the truth in a way that, uh, that helps you achieve your goals. You know, while Tony Montana would use a gun to get what he wanted, um, now Wall Street, um, Ivy League schools with cleverly disguised course names um, are convincing countless students, MBA students, and entrepreneurs that bending the truth to achieve your purposes is an acceptable business practice. This is a very dangerous roll of the dice for both criminals and the Ivy League CEOs because you never really know if it'll work. Um, 
if it does work, if it's executed well, you go on to success. And if it doesn't work, you know, it could mean a financial failure or it could mean a bullet in the head if you're a street criminal. The problem is that there is so much growing pressure to succeed at any cost that faking it until you make it has now become part of the business model. If you watch some of the reality uh, TV shows, um, you'll notice that aspiring entrepreneurs who come on the shows to pitch their business ideas to investors um, sometimes, get, uh, sometimes get the deal. But then you'll notice that a lot of those uh, entrepreneurs just disappear. That's because after the show, um, the, on, the, uh, the, the investors will implement a vetting process to see how much of what the entrepreneur has told them was true. And if it turns out to be an unacceptable level of puffery or exaggeration or outright lie just so they can fake it until they make it, then you'll notice that those businesses just disappear. They never manifest, they never get to the marketplace, they usually don't get funded, and that's because rather than engaging in real business practices, they've been brainwashed to believe that you, if you fake it long enough, you will make it. A lot of people believe that on some profound level, Scarface the movie, um, when it was released in 1983, you know, it, it caused a cultural change uh, in the culture and it, it forced people to realize that everything they see in business is not always reality. And it also caused them to believe that just like Tony Montana, um, the best way to get ahead is to demonstrate a level of ruthless dislocation um, that allows you to lie, cheat, and steal, and engage in wholesale fraud in order to inch yourself, inch yourself closer, you and your company bring yourselves closer to um, legitimacy. Today people, be, today people believe that because of that a lot of governments and corporations um, you know, engage in this sort of behavior and uh, that's why the level of skepticism out there is just uh, you know, unprecedented. People don't believe what companies do. People don't believe what governments say or do. So with that in mind, um, I want to wish you well and uh, I will talk to you soon.